Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, select board of the town of Sunderland. I think it's, uh, unless I want to be corrected, it's August 9th. Is that okay? Good. Uh, I'd like to call the order at 6.30. Um, I think we should have a TV show about what happens the first 15 minutes before a select board meeting but uh, pre-show it'll make you it will make you chuckle um, wouldn't you say so crystal <laughs> probably at yeah, my probably. expense <laughs> <laughs> okay so first uh, good evening the first order of business we can make this quick tonight first order of business is approved the minutes of July 26th Hearing motion we approve the minutes of July 26th second we have a motion made and second to uh, accept the minutes as presented on um, July 26th. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. So because we're here live, we don't have to identify our votes, right? Correct. Okay. In, in the old way to do things, we had to raise our hand or whatever because of... Yeah. Visuals. The government's uh, the governor the governor's thing, but now that we're doing live, I just want to make sure that we don't have to raise our hand or anything. We just the old way, right? I can see you and okay, yep. okay. Thank you, Jeffrey. <clears throat> uh, new business. We have a new business coming to town. Um, as the business name is a clear view windows and more. And we have invited, we actually have two, the other, the other company's not here yet, but um, we have extended an invitation to Ryan, who is the uh, proprietor of the new business. And Ryan, if you could introduce yourself to the town um, and tell us a little bit about what you're gonna do and where you're located and how people get hold of you. And um, you're, uh, you get a chance to do a live TV commercial. Hello everyone, I'm Ryan. I'm the owner of Clearview Windows and More. Um, started it uh, shortly after I was going through some life changes. Uh, got into cleaning windows. <coughs> decided that um, noticing with a carpentry background, people had broken windows, you know, gaskets and stuff was falling apart. And I was like, oh, I can <coughs> take care of that. Screens. Uh, spoke with a couple glass shops. Uh, reached out with Amherst Glass. Um, and then Yankee Glass down in Chigamee. And uh, they both uh, said, hey, you should put a business in Sunderland. Sunderland is a great location. Uh, we get a lot of phone calls. Nobody reaches, you know, all our phone calls are from there. The next closest place is Greenfield, and um, Greenfield's a great place, but some people don't want to go up to Greenfield. So, uh, you know, I decided that I did some research, found a place, a shop to start, and uh, finally opened it up back in March and uh, been working hard to make it successful and uh, give back to the community. So what kind, of, what kind of services are you providing, Ryan, so specifically? We can come in and clean the windows. Um, you know, get a broken window pane. We can replace it for storefronts, especially. Um, commercial work is very, uh, very small. No one is really out there doing the big commercial jobs. You got a business card? Uh, I do, but I'm all out. I just reordered new ones. So. so so Ryan, if someone were try to reach you, what kind of telephone number would they use? Best way to get a hold of me is my cell phone, which is 413-768-7663. So your telephone number is 413-768-7663. Yep. Yep. And another way to get a hold of me is basically 413 Clearview Windows and more at gmail.com. It's the email. Um, just shoot me an email, reach out to me if there's any questions. Um, I can come out and take a look at what you got, what the situation is. So, so what's your, what's your uh, email? 413 Clearview Windows and more at gmail.com. At Hotmail? Gmail. At Gmail. So 413 Clearview Windows and more 
at gmail.com. Okay, best time to call you? Uh, anytime. I'm usually up from 9 a.m. to at least midnight, so anytime to call me is fine. If I don't get back to you, just if I don't pick up, just leave me a voicemail. I'll okay. get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. Um, do you have a backlog, or I mean, people wait? Are the people going to wait for a while, or? Uh, right now, I mean, every every business, you know, every small business has got a little bit of a backlog. That's good. Just because of COVID going on. Yep. Um, I mean, I'm looking for help. Uh, I definitely could use help. I mean, I'm averaging 65 hours a week on my on my own. Um, yeah, you know, I've got. 32 uh, storefronts I clean bi-weekly um, through Amherst all the way up to Greenfield. Um, I also service and uh, install and clean ice machines for uh, restaurants. Mm -hmm. That's one of my other things I'm in. No one else around here is into that. Um, so I, I'm basically working 24-7. David, Crystal, have any questions for Ryan? No, not at the top of my head, I don't think. Yeah. Welcome. So so again, Ryan um, is the proprietor worker at Clearview Windows and More. It's a uh, new business that's opened up in Sunderland. They can window repair, yep. installation, yep. replace broken panes, mm -hmm. also do screen repair. Absolutely. Yep. One thing I absolutely love is screen repair. So if you got damaged screens, <laughs> bring them on down. Okay. And I'm actually located right next to Willoughby's and Wild Roots in the same building. So for anybody that wants to know Willoughby's, if they don't know where Willoughby's is or Wild Root, it's right behind to the west of the Congregational Church. So it's between the Congregational Church and the river, the big white building. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Ryan, anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Um, welcome to town. I hope you do well. If there's anything that we can do, please come and see us. Uh, you want to come back in six months and give us another update and another uh, follow-up? Sure. Again, we, uh, we hope you do well. And uh, So someone had uh, windows in their car where they could bring them down to you also? You can, um, but I, I, I hate to put business away, you know, a dollar is a dollar, but uh, it's not profitable for me. It'd be better to call Safe Light. Um, okay. And do, do you do, uh, so you would just summon a call up about doing a whole house, and do you come in and do a whole house windows, all the windows in a house? Yeah. Is there a better time of year to have them done? No. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe not spring, because I'm really busy in the spring, but, you know, any time of year is fine. Okay. Thank you very much, Ryan. Absolutely. Nice meeting you. Good luck, man. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Next. You need more questions? We're nope. all set? All set. All righty. We'll move on. Jeffrey? Do you want me to talk about the other business? Yes, sir. Or just introduce them. Um, so there's another new business uh, <clears throat> right next door to Ryan or maybe two doors down, um, called Adventure East. And they have kayak, they're a kayak adventure company. They do kayak tours along the Connecticut um, and occasionally parts of the deer field, I believe. They also do hiking trips um, and they're gonna be getting bikes. I think right now they're doing uh, a lot with larger groups and companies, um, but they, are also interested in just hearing from individuals that, that might want to do a little kayak tour of the Connecticut. And obviously they're across the river, uh, across the street oh, from the boat launch. So it's a, a pretty convenient location. Um, and they're excited to be there. I was there last week uh, talking to the owner, Brian, and um, I, think, I think he said they had like 17 or 24 kayaks um, working on getting their bicycle inventory to do bike rides too. Um, but it's kind of neat to see, you know, b between all the businesses, what they've done with sort of a former auto repair shop and, and how they changed the space and helped 
helped it fit the, the variety of businesses that they have in there. Um, so, yeah, Adventure East. I, uh, I'll put the the link to the website. I think it's adventureeast.com is, is Brian's website, but I'll I'll put that on the in the minutes okay. um, as well. So, so the COVID the COVID period has been very difficult, but it's also left has opened up some opportunities as well. And I, I, I and the board applaud the entrepreneurialism of people like Brian and Ryan, Brian and Ryan, um, to to take take a chance, especially at this time. So, again, I, I wish them all the best of luck. All right, next up, Jeff. Okay, uh, ARPA funds discussion. So that's the American Rescue Plan Act uh, that was passed, I think, January or February. Um, and the latest round of COVID relief, basically. Uh, Sunderland is anticipated to receive a total of about a million dollars, just north of a million dollars, which sounds like a lot until you drill down a little bit into it. Um, there are only six general categories that you can use it for. Uh, support public health expenditures, address negative economic impacts caused by the public health emergency, replace lost public sector revenue, which is a little bit more flexible, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, provide premium pay for essential workers, and then invest in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. So I mentioned a million dollars. Um, of that million dollars, over 700,000 of it is allocated, it's called a county allocation, um, which works in probably the vast majority of states, but not Massachusetts, where county government has kind of gone away. Um, so right now the state is waiting to get guidance from the federal government on how Massachusetts municipalities can access those funds. Um, so that leaves about um, $380,000 uh, in direct disbursement to the municipalities. We got about 190000 already. So that, again, that, that can be spent in, in any of those five categories. Um, the revenue replacement funds is interesting um, in that unlike previously you know you couldn't use it basically to backfill revenue with this they said as long as you're spending it in these categories that's fine so even things that we had planned for for example purchasing the emergency radios uh, <clears throat> replacement radios um, well it doesn't make sense until I talk about the categories let me do that first um, I think there are six categories in revenue replacement. Uh, maintenance of infrastructure, um, including roads, modernization of cybersecurity, health services, environmental remediation, school or educational services, and the provision of police, fire, and other public safety services. So one of the strategies that I've heard is towns are saying, okay, well, how much did we budget for police and fire and what of that can we use ARPA funds? And then we sort of retain what we had budgeted. So for example, the radio replacements was about $52,000 from the capital stabilization fund and uh, 22, 23,000 from um, the stabilization fund. So if we use 75,000 in revenue replacement, that money could go back into cable st capital stabilization and stabilization um, and build build up those funds. Although technically, we couldn't just put it in stabilization. That you is one of the restrictions. Yeah. You can't vote it in. It can't be used for rainy day funds or anything like that. So we couldn't just deposit it into stabilization, but we can use it for something we had appropriated stabilization funds for. Right. Um, so we did a calculation with the, the finance team and um, we think that our lo revenue loss from fiscal year 20 was about $345,000. Um, 
so that's funds that can be used for the revenue replacement. Um, and so I started, I don't know if you want to, you want me to talk through some of my thoughts on how it might be used or if you want to share your initial impressions um, or how you want to proceed with the discussion. Have, have you, have you um, got together with, with our department heads and talked about this? I've reached out to them and included what I've heard back in this. Yeah. Okay. So why, why don't you? Why don't you? Well, I would recommend maybe uh, meeting with uh, with our department heads, and you know include bring over uh, Frontier and and uh, the elementary school and discuss. You know, bring them up up to speed, and then then. Uh, then we can give a uh, total, total picture of it. But let, let's make sure we, we get there. I, I'd be interested also in like the sewer, you know, re, you know, relining of some, you know, we've talked about the I and I uh, concerns. I mean, it'd be a great, great opportunity if if uh, the operator of our wastewater treatment plant had had a has an idea where where they have I and I, the infiltration coming in and you could talk about relining those areas mm -hmm. um, that that would help that would that that'd be a great and also I look at the highway superintendent I get you know there there are some areas some roads that he'd probably need and and Jeff I I'd like to revisit some of the street lights I mean you know we we have very minimal street lights but there's a couple areas in town that we really should look at, uh, especially now that we get nice sidewalks. Something David's been talking about for a while: um, proper lighting on the sidewalks now. You know, so maybe, maybe that's a few things that we that we could would t talk about and you know bring them up. Yep. Yeah, I read through the memo, and so uh, the stuff in there made you know made sense so, so far. So yeah, and I think the other thing to mention. Um, is that we don't have to spend the funds until the end of 2024. So we have a few yeah. years, so there's no, no rush. Um, and we can recalculate the revenue loss over the next two years, so yeah. that may go up as well. Okay. Um, but let's, let's do that. Let's, 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 uh, let's, bring, let's have our, let, let's, let's get the department head, see what, let's, let's start to have an input, a list of things together. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of they probably had a lot of changes in the elementary school, but you know, let's make sure that they're 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 fine with our our their ventilation and their heating and you know, all all those kind of good stuff. Okay. Yep, that sounds good. And yeah, I th I think just just to set the table, I think that the challenge. I think it's going to be really easy to spend the revenue replacement funds. Right. I think it's the challenge is it. we're going to have six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But that does, you know, if we're doing street lights, if we're doing sewer, if we're doing roads, that might that money might go off of fast. I, I think I think it could take care of it very easily. Yeah. I, and I mean, it's not like you, you know, Jeff. I mean, just one 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 thing is where where um, where the project. Is leaving off it really it shorted itself by what a hundred feet or something like that or it was supposed to keep going in certain areas right on the north the north silver lane the widening i think yeah all right so i mean we have to look at that so yeah and 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 you know we're, we're looking at you know the reconstruction out here on on school street and you know the and George George has to finish off the uh, the southern portion of 47 and the northern por portion of 47. I mean those those are like 12 years plus. So I, I mean there there's there's projects, and and I I mean you know we need, really need to talk to to Warner Brothers about the treatment plan. And again I go back to I and I, you know the the I and I is a serious thing. And if we and if we could. And, and last time we spent what three hundred thousand dollars when, where we took out a, a loan for three hundred thousand dollars to, to do the lining, yep. you know that that. That may be something that we want to consider doing also. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. We won't have a problem spending. It's a matter of prioritizing it and right. figuring out what to do with it. Yep. Well, plenty well, of things. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a good. I mean, it's a good. Sort of a good problem to have, but. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> good. <clears throat> Anything else on the ARPA? No. Nope. nope. Just wanted okay. to start yep. the discussion and let people know that. It is a million dollars, but there are limited categories that we can spend it in, so. Okay. Select board updates, David? Uh, no updates for me. I think we missed what we got the appointment of our town administrator for something, right? Yes, so we're, we're <laughs> hoping to apply for an ADA project grant for the early education uh, playground at the elementary school. And so looking through, we need a, an appointed ADA coordinator. We need to update our grievance policy with the ADA, new ADA coordinator's name and the public notice as well. Um, and that's due, I think, the first week in September. So I was hoping to take care of that today. Okay. Unless you want to appoint somebody else. <laughs> Surprise. Do you want a motion for that? So yeah. you're supposed to motion. Yeah. Real quick before he changes his motion, mind. <laughs> motion to appoint our town administrator as the ADA coordinator. I second it. You're getting good at that, huh? Well, we'll have to also add gaffer and key grip and a few other things because I noticed he was up moving the camera because it's not a, it's a manual camera. So second <clears throat> on the key grip. <laughs> <laughs> I second it. Oh, okay. All those in uh, favor of appointment of Dave, I mean, Jeff, <laughs> I'm doing Jeff as the, uh, Jeff as the ADA coordinator. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Congratulations, Jeffrey. You're now the ADA coordinator. Did we ever made you the chief procurement officer yet? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. All looks good on a resume. <laughs> those, those three classes that you took, weren't they amazing? Did the inspector general talk to you? I saw him on video. Yeah. To, and what's what did you where did you learn most and what was the biggest thing you learned in that class? What was the biggest thing I learned in the pre uh, what the thresholds were for how when you could? I, I learned something oh. much more important than that. What's that. Never lie to a federal officer. Well, that's Martha, a pretty good rule to follow. As a general well, rule. Well, know? they, they that, you, you find all the people that go to jail. They didn't go to jail for the crimes that you think they went to. Go, they went because they 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 may have not. They a didn't tell the whole truth about though. something. Martha Seward, what did she go to jail for? Lying insider about what trading? she did. Huh? Yeah. It wasn't insider trading. No, she went to because well, because she. Uh, they got her on that after. Yeah, but like right. Yeah, it, so and he says, "Look, you can do a lot if you do anything wrong. Look, you're easier, to, you're easier just to say yes, you did it, than to try to lie about it. Because if you lie about it, you will definitely go to jail." I don't think they talk to our politicians about that, but <laughs> they, they, maybe they should take the class because if they took that class, they would never lie. Anyway, all right, select work. Hey. <laughs> You're part of the media. You're just not supposed to have an opinion back there. All right, select board updates. David, you have an update? No, nope, I'm good. I have no updates. Um, a couple. The first thing is um, the other day the um, senior center director um, resigned, so we are in the process of looking for a new uh, senior center director. The uh, Council of Aging, we're also, for Town of Sundown, is also looking for members, right? Yep. So if you're interested in serving on, on a pretty worthwhile committee, the, the Council of Aging is looking for people. Uh, we do have a couple members, but um, additional members would be greatly appreciated. The other thing is, Jeff, I would like, um, we're gonna have a 33 unit um, senior housing pretty by the by this time next year right so I think one of the things that's always has been a problem is transportation from Sunderland to Deerfield can we contact can we contact 
the PVTA and ask them how are we going to get our seniors over to the senior center because we may have we may have a, a pretty big with that with that senior center going in I mean the senior housing going in there there's, there may be a concentrated need I don't think they have a lot of park there's not going to be a lot of parking there there's going to be some but not a lot so people there will be depending upon uh, public transportation so I think we need to talk to and you may have to talk to PBTA and the FRTA to make make that happen okay I, I, I think that's one of the things I would recommend uh, town administrator updates yeah a uh, couple updates um, as you probably know unfortunately we're going through another surge uh, of COVID-19 and so just wanted to give an update about what's been happening locally uh, reached out to the Board of Health um, who just pulled a up-to-date report and since July 1st there have only been three reported cases in Sunderland so not zero um, but but generally better off than in other communities um, you know I, I think that one of the things to keep in mind is that the Delta variant is very contagious um, and so we need to continue to to be careful as a community and even ev i think uh the chair of the board of health said we have really high vaccination rates in in the community and that's part of the reason that we haven't seen a lot of cases but even so you can you, there are breakthrough uh breakthrough cases so even if you're vaccinated um remember that I think everybody <coughs> under 16 is not so they you know and, and the trend has been that children it, it's affecting children much more than the earlier versions um, so please you know be careful when you're out in public uh, wear a mask especially if you have an unvaccinated person at home or um, you're at higher risk uh, it, it's it's still going around and um, you, you can still get it even if you've been vaccinated. So uh, I think the Board of Health Chair was also saying it, it's, you carry a high viral load, so it's easier to pass it on to, which is part of why it's so contagious. The symptoms may not be as bad if you've been vaccinated, but it's not necessarily about you, it's about who you might pass it to. Um, so I wanted to, to raise that. Um, hopefully it's a blip in the radar and, and we'll get through it, but um, cases have been rising for for a few weeks now so i just wanted to give an update on how that was going um they're not recommending any changes to what we're doing now not right now so far we, we've basically been following what the state's been yeah. doing um pretty consistently and and they have not uh at, they have not mandated masks um, I know that the school committees and the boards of health are trying to meet uh, the evening of the 18th um, to discuss how the school the k-12 school year is gonna look and and what they're gonna be doing um, so stay tuned for that in a couple weeks but um, right now no no recommendations but I mean, I'll give myself and this is an example. When I go to a store or something, I, I put a mask on because <laughs> I have two young children at home. Yeah. So um, I think it, you know, the, right, no change in the rules, but uh, just wanted to pass along that, that guidance from the Board of Health. Um, the second thing is that may have noticed that milling on Old Amherst Road has started. They're gonna mill and pave that road. It should be complete. I believe the top coat is going on next Wednesday. Okay. So this week they're milling. I think George said they're putting a shim coat on Monday and then the top coat on Wednesday. So it should be all done um, by then. Um, what else? Oh, uh, la uh, the day after that's done, um, just to let people know that the uh, Morse Hill Outdoor Center that 
once mm-hmm. a year annually camps uh, in Riverside oh, yeah, Park is going to be back. Them. That's going to be Thursday the 19th that they're going to be here. They do their two-day uh, river tour and yep. usually camp out. So they'll be back. Um, last Monday night, the Open Space and Recreation Plan Committee uh, met for their public meeting and I guess for the select board and I don't know which cameras are on you might be able to see some maps and um, there was an activity where people were ranking different priorities within the four goals of the plan Um, so uh, FERCOG that's helping with that plan along with the committee is going to take that feedback back um, update the plan submit it get state approval and then we'll have another seven-year open space plan for those who weren't able to participate in the meeting and want to provide their feedback on our website on the conservation commission page uh, the left navigation menu there's open space and recreation plans and in the presentation on the second to last slide (laughs) sorry for the directions but um there's a survey you can take and you can prioritize within the four goals as well if you and that they're accepting um feedback until august 20th so if people are interested in doing that um and we had a pretty good turnout i think there were between zoom and in person i want to say there were 10 or 12 people there um so pretty good turnout and then um the last thing is that we put out a procurement for cleaning services um, and we only received one response um, it was very uh, covers all, all the cleaning we currently get done and was very similarly priced so um, that was finalized or due today um, so it's not on the agenda, but if if it's okay with the select board, I would ask for a a motion to um, approve or award the contract to them and then we'll get them to sign the actual contract and I'll bring it in for your signature if that's okay. I motion we do the contract for the same people doing it? Yeah, yep, Salsa Enterprises. Okay, motion on the recommendation of those procurement officer for second. the awarding of the cleaning contract. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify five by saying aye. 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 Three zero, <clears throat> Jeff. Thank you. One other thing. Um, can we start looking at the replacement of the front stairs? On this, <coughs> on this building here? Come into the town hall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're 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 starting to show their age again. Yeah. Um, are we looking to replace them in the same footprint? And I don't know if this was discussed previously, but would we want to, for example, put a accessible ramp? I know we have the. I'm probably going to get it wrong. The elevator in the back of the building. Yeah. Um, but would we want to do a ramp in the front as well, or are we just looking to? Right now, let's let's see what what can come up with the uh, the uh, front stairs, changing the front stairs. That's something you do, Ryan. <laughs> we uh, we got to do a whole yeah. process, but I, mean, I can. Um, what is? I didn't take a look at the concrete now. The concrete. Yeah. Would you guys be opposed to doing like a the same thing or like a metal through flow? So you, you know, you're not tracking as you walk in, you kick the salt off in the winter and you're not tracking in the building. Mm-hmm. You know, something you could go through. Um, drawing a blank. Steel company up in Bernston. Oh, shed. The sh- uh, steel shed. Steel shed, yeah. You know, they can fabricate something. I can be in touch with them. I, I think we could look, look at that. The only potential problem is there's a USGS survey marker in that concrete. Okay. I have no idea what that is. So we're going to have to maintain the marker. 
Well, I don't think you can just remove it. Yeah. So there's a, a bronze mark that the USGS put out on different locations. It puts the elevation, and there was one right on the corner of that, <clears throat> on the west corner, northwest corner of that. So, um, yeah, I, I think that we could, I, I mean, if you, if you could like put, some, if you put something together, what it looked like. Well, yeah, I mean, we don't want to talk too much because. Yeah. I mean, you have to look We at have it. the whole procurement yeah. stuff, yep. but. I just, good to know that you, <laughs> time to start looking yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've had I'd like, I'd, on I would like to look. I would like to start to look at that because, yeah. um, I I think that, you know, it may take a couple of years between now and we finally get something done. Right. But we got to start looking. Well, and we've had more problems too with like surfaces like concrete like that in the roads with. The erratic winter temperatures, where you get rapid freeze thaw cycles, more than we used to get. So, well, I I I, I think problems. there was there was there was there's there's a couple problems, and it goes back to <clears throat> Dick Oinenen, um That there's really should be some kind of railing on that. Yeah. Right now, there's no railing. So, I mean, there there there's all, there's concerns. So yeah. we really have right, to address that. If we touch it, then we have to bring it up to code. So let's, and yeah, let's take let's start taking a look at it. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? No, I'm good. All set. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. I second it. I have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. We have a three-zero vote to adjourn. So let's call us out at uh, seven ten. Oh, hi, Peter. Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. Enter your participant ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just press pound to continue. Can you hear us now, Peter? You are in the meeting now. There are three participants in the meeting. This meeting is being recorded. Hello, Peter. Hey, that's better. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Some Where technical do we cut difficulties. Out? What can I do for yeah, you? Yeah, practice working out these, these things. What would you like, Peter? Nothing. I'm just seeing what's going on, and and yep. you know my usual concern, which I think Jeff is taking real good care of it, is when stuff comes up like with your possible, you know, at some point use of these new funds. Is that as long as I hear Jeff say hey, he's in touch with the different schools as well as the town departments and stuff, then you know I don't have to worry about it because he's doing it. You know, he's doing what he should be doing, and. I'm going to get used to that, but it's still nice to hear, so thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Thanks. Alrighty. Uh, anything Thanks. else, Peter? So, just, uh, we have that, uh, we tend to have a meeting on the 18th with the Board to Health, but it hadn't, I haven't seen anything final on it yet, but, you know, we need to talk about school procedures for the year. Yeah. yeah. Joint meeting. Well, it's the uh, new normal which is con con continually changing, so uh, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. <laughs> Let's call us out at seven twelve. We are adjourned now, Mr. Back of the Room.